guys, welcome back to a case of econ struggles. Welcome to another market structure struggle. Today, I want to review the different types of market structures that we've talked about in previous videos. There's a lot of them. They have very specific and sort of different characteristics, and it can be hard to keep them all straight. So let's just go through these, compare them, and hopefully help you have a better sense of your head of which market structure is which, so that when you're approaching a question on a test, a quiz, or a homework, you can look at the market structure that they're asking about you can think about which characteristic goes with that market, and that's going to help you answer the question better. Timestamps are below. If you would like to jump around, let's go ahead and get right into it. The first thing that I think is helpful in keeping these different types of market structures straight is what I call the market power and size spectrum. So you can see we have our five different types of market structures here. Now notice that when we go from perfect competition to monopoly, as we go from left to right, the number of firms in that market is decreasing. We go from infinitely many to many to few, to two, to one, and the market power is going to be increasing because as I have fewer firms in the market, each one has more market power. So perfect competition, the firm has zero power. I really have zero power in the long run. I have some market power. I have a lot of market power. I have infinite market power. So this is something, again, that I think is really easy to keep in your head to keep some of these different market structures straight. But now let's talk about the different types of characteristics. So here is my main matrix for comparing these different types of market structures. Notice that I've just grouped oligopoly and duopoly together, and then they have a few firms or two firms. But let's just go through this line by line. So in terms of whether or not firms are price takers or setters, notice that firms are only price setters in an oligopoly or monopoly market. That is because they have market power in those markets. In the perfect competition and monopolistic competition, they're price takers. They do not have market power. In terms of the products we're selling in perfect competition and monopolistic competition, we're either selling the same product in a perfect competition or like similar but differentiable in monopolistic competition. So again, a perfect competition, maybe we're all selling milk and you can't really tell who's selling which milk. In a monopolistic competition, maybe we're making cars and I can tell the difference between a Toyota and a Honda. Oligopoly, I'm making a similar or same product, so that's the Boeing versus Airbus making commercial airline example. And in the monopoly, there's only one product in the market, otherwise it wouldn't be a monopoly. The number of firms in each type of market we talked about in the previous slide, but in perfect competition we have infinitely many. Monopolistic competition, fewer but still many. Oligopoly, few or two firms if we're in a duopoly. And monopoly, just as the name suggests, we only have one firm. The size of each firm is also increasing as we go from perfect competition to monopoly. So we start off in perfect competition where every firm is very, very small, and we go across the board until we end up with a huge firm in the monopoly setting. If we continue down to talk about profit in the short and long run, perfect competition, you're never making a profit short run or long run. In a monopolistic competition, maybe you make a profit in the short run, but you definitely do not make a profit in the long run in a oligopoly slash monopoly slash duopoly markets, you're making positive profit in both the short and the long run, which makes sense. And we can see that further when we look at these graphs. So here is the perfect competition, supply equals demand. Monopolistic competition, we set marginal cost equal to marginal revenue, and we go up to the demand curve. So again, maybe we're making positive profit in the short run. In the long run, we might have entry, and eventually that profit will be zero. Oligopoly, duopoly, and monopoly, same thing as monopolist competition in terms of the fact that we're finding where marginal cost equals marginal revenue, and we're going up to the demand curve to find the price. The difference here is that we are earning positive profit in the short and the long run. Just to sort of bring what I just said home mathematically, in perfect competition, marginal revenue is just the price because we're a price taker, and that's going to be equal to the marginal cost. Notice that the price is equal to the average variable cost, which is equal to the average total cost, which again means zero profit in the short or long run. In the rest of the markets, we're setting marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. In the oligopoly and monopoly, we're price setters instead of price takers. In the long run in monopolistic competition, price is gonna be equal to marginal cost, which is what we said when we say that they make zero profit in the long run. Price is going to be greater than average variable cost, which is how we can say that profit is positive in the short run. In both duopoly, oligopoly, and monopoly markets, the price is going to be greater than the average total cost and the average variable cost, which again, we're just saying positive economic profit in the short run and the long run. I also added this row here. This is barriers to entry. Barriers to entry is just how tough it is for one firm to get into this market. So in a perfectly competitive market, we say there are no barriers to entry ever. In a monopolistically competitive market, there are no barriers to entry in the long run. Might be some barriers to entry in the short run, but eventually firms will be able to get in there. 
In an oligopoly or duopoly, there are severe barriers to entry. It's not impossible to enter this market, but it's pretty, pretty hard. In monopoly, there are impossible barriers to entry. You are not coming to this market. So hopefully this gives you some additional ways to keep these different types of market structures straight in your head. If this was helpful, make sure to like and subscribe, and we will see you next time for another case of Econ Struggles.